The problem is that the developers over at Naughty Dog, the ones that worked on Uncharted 4, are sick and tired of this, and they're leaving. Of all of the non-lead designers in Uncharted 4, 70% of them have left the company and have gone elsewhere. You end up with a very inexperienced development staff that is having some serious problems. Hey guys, how are you holding up with the world ending and all? Not great? Yeah, me neither. In light of the world ending, I thought there would be nothing more appropriate than discussing a game wherein the world is and has already ended, and that is The Last of Us. More broadly, I want to talk about the developer behind the game, Naughty Dog. I've made a lot of videos on Naughty Dog and their titles. Right now I'm working on a full complete series critiquing the Uncharted games one through four all the way up to Lost Legacy, which is a game that everyone seems to forget exists. And of course, I am waiting with bated breath for The Last of Us Part Two, as I'm sure many of you are as well. Chances are you're excited for it if you clicked on this video. I don't know why you'd be here if you aren't. No judgment though, you do you. Keep clicking on my stuff, I won't stop you. But the point of this video isn't really to critique the games or talk about what could be in the future games. The point of this is to talk about the mechanism by which Naughty Dog is creating The Last of Us Part II and the studio and ethical culture that they're cultivating. <laughs> That's going to permeate itself forward through their next releases after The Last of Us Part II as they move on to whatever other projects they might be pursuing. So buckle up. We're gonna get into the nitty gritty of how one of the most enigmatic and fascinating studios on planet Earth creates their games and why they're in serious trouble. And of course, thank you to this episode's sponsor, The Ridge. So Naughty Dog's reputation within the gaming industry is one of extreme perfectionism, polish, and quality. People know that when they buy a Naughty Dog title, they're going to get one of the most polished, one of the most graphically impressive games. They're going to get their money's worth. It's a really good reputation to have, but it's not easy to just create an incredibly polished game with incredible graphics, voice acting, writing, etc. That takes years and years of cultivating talent, and that talent is at the heart of everything Naughty Dog does and it happens to be one of their weak points right now. What do I mean? Well, in a recent article that Jason Schreier wrote over at Kotaku, he detailed a bunch of interviews he had with some employees, or rather, former employees of Naughty Dog. These employees asked to speak on the condition of anonymity because it's not a good thing to be talking and gossiping about a studio or a company you used to work for. Even if it's technically legal, it just doesn't get you anything if you're known as the guy that rats on the companies that he leaves. Like, it's just... There's no use in your name being out there. If you're trying to make the point that their working conditions are bad, you might as well just say that, hide your name, go about working at whatever company you're at. It, it, you just don't get anything by throwing your name out there. The only reason I say that is because some people were trying to dismiss these allegations because people were stating them without their names attached to it. When I see no problem with that, I would think it would be incredibly stupid for them to attach their names to accusations such as these but that's just my opinion. So what are the specific accusations? Well, Naughty Dog apparently, as a result of their strive for perfection, they tend to approach their employees as individualized perfectionists, which isn't a bad thing inherently, but what it ends up being is that the management structure is all but absent, and Naughty Dog apparently doesn't have any sort of producer management structure because of this which is insane. For those of you who don't know, I do a lot of like musicals and plays and stuff. It's one of my other hobbies on the side. It's just something I enjoy doing. And that's a creative outlet. It's something where you have a bunch of actors, artists, lighting designers, incredible uh, woodworking technicians, just carpenters, I guess they're called. You have all of this incredible talent coming into one space, working on one project that has to meet one deadline. You open on this date and you need to have everything working perfectly so that everyone's safe, everyone looks good, the story is conveyed properly, everything technically goes well, and the audience has a great time, wants more of that show to the point where they recommend it to their friends, family, whoever. That's how you get a successful show to take off. You can't 
delay it much it really at all you have to hit those targets and in order to hit those targets you have to have a very strong management structure in place you have to have directors producers assistant and associate producers and directors you have to have people that are in charge of every team that are having weekly usually three to four times a week actually meetings about what's going on to make sure everybody's on the same page make sure that the set's being built that the lights are being hung that we'll have the actors we need in place to do the lighting focus because one person might be six foot six and you have to stage the lighting differently than if they were five foot six all of these things have to come into play and you have to plan it very very carefully and that is an incredibly simple pursuit when compared to a video game with a video game especially one like the last of us or any of naughty dog's other titles you're dealing with a team of hundreds of people not to mention all of the contracted work that comes in people often forget about the contractors but naughty dog isn't able to do all of this themselves they contract out a lot of it a lot of the texture work on the walls and floors that you'll see in any given level the team at Naughty Dog Studios is rarely doing that. They're usually sending that off to a contracted company that's a thousand miles away or more so that they do that and they can focus on the more important elements of the game. All told, for a game like this, you could have hundreds upon hundreds or even thousands of people that touch it at some point in the development process who are interacting with this game in some way, helping it to end up the way that it does. So naturally you need a production team that can make sure everybody's on time, on track, everybody's staying at the office from this time to this time, that they're getting their paid time off when they're sick, that they're able to work from home if they can. All of these things are incredibly important. And Naughty Dog doesn't have any of it. You see the core accusation at the heart of the Schreier article, which I'll have linked below, he did a fantastic job on it, is that because Naughty Dog lacks a production staff that's well established and is the intermediary between the directors of the game, people like Neil Druckmann and the individualized developers, because that's lacking, you end up with a staff that's very unhappy, that doesn't have any clear direction at any given moment, and is kind of just stumbling through the development process. Some people that Schreier spoke to and other people that have spoken out to other outlets have said that often they were working on a scene for instance and would have to redo it four or five or six times because the directors just didn't like it and didn't sign off on it but they couldn't offer any specific guidance or direction on what they wanted they just had to redo it try again and get it right the next time very inefficient management and this can work when the staff is more experienced when you have a lot of people who have worked together for 10 15 20 years they usually know what the other person likes or doesn't like what the other person needs or doesn't need you can work together much better and more effectively when you have that uh, knot that that tie together but when your staff is much younger and less experienced you end up with a very chaotic development process, which is what's apparently going on behind the scenes over at Naughty Dog. To quote some of these developers directly, they've said, quote, this game, The Last of Us Part Two, is really good, but at a large cost to the people developing it. To directly quote Schreier from his article over on Kotaku, he said, quote, many who have worked at Naughty Dog over the years describe it as a duality, as a place that can be simultaneously the best and worst workplace in the world. Working at Naughty Dog means designing beloved, critically acclaimed games alongside artists and engineers who are considered some of the best in their fields. But for many of these same people, it also means working 12 hour days or longer and even weekends when the studio is in crunch mode, sacrificing their health, relationships, and personal lives at the altar of the game. A lot of these developers said, to be fair, that they were never pushed or directly asked to stay late, to stay past their given hours, but the company culture made it all but necessary, not just because everybody else was doing it, so you just followed suit, but because to finish your day of work, you had to take your project, whatever you were working on, and get approval from your boss, or in other words, one of the lead directors on the game. Those directors are often in meetings until 7 or 8 p.m., meaning that if you went to work at 9 and you're expecting to get off at 5, you finish your work at 5, but you have to wait to get signed off by your boss in order to leave, so you have to wait for them to get out of their meeting. So you end up just sitting at your desk for an extra 3, 
four hours, maybe, doing nothing when you all you needed was a signature or when all you needed was for them to say, nope, that's wrong, redo it. It's incredibly inefficient and it could be greatly improved if they had a decent production staff. If you wanna see what a good production staff is like, just go up in the search bar after this video and watch Raising Kratos, which is the documentary on the creation of the reboot of the God of War series with Cory Barlog over at Sony Santa Monica. It's fascinating. They have some incredible producers over there and you see what a healthy work environment's like. Not to mention that they're also filming it and making a documentary that's to be released to the public for free on the creation process of this game. They're not secretive. They have nothing to hide. They're not hiding in the shadows, abusing their employees or pushing them beyond their limits. They're being very transparent. They're showing everything to the world. They have nothing to hide. It's a duality of company cultures between Naughty Dog and Sony Santa Monica, and I think I and many other people, apparently the employees too, would prefer that of Sony Santa Monica. Two phenomenal studios, but they have very different attitudes towards their employees. But what's the real issue I hear you ask? Why does this actually matter? Sure, game developers push their employees all the time. Crunch time exists. It's an unfortunate reality of the industry, at least for right now. I hear you. The problem is that the developers over at Naughty Dog, the ones that worked on Uncharted 4, are sick and tired of this, and they're leaving. To make this point crystal clear, of all of the non-lead designers in Uncharted 4, all of the people actually designing the levels, the gameplay systems, the animations, the code, all of that, of all of those people who worked and were credited for Uncharted 4, 70% of them have left the company and have gone elsewhere. This means that they've been replaced with newbies because professionals in the industry are trying to stay away from Naughty Dog because they've heard these rumors. And you end up with a very inexperienced development staff that is having some serious problems. And I'm going to explain to you exactly why this is such a major issue for The Last of Us Part Two, and also for whatever games are coming afterwards. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, The Ridge. The Ridge makes some incredibly high quality, minimalistic wallets, such as this one. This is the Black Titanium. I use it every day as my daily driver. It feels good. I get compliments on it all the time. RFID protected. It's fantastic. They also have a plethora of other accessories that are fantastically well built, such as the backpack, which I happen to use every single day when I go to class. Class. Well, I guess not currently because all of my classes have been suspended thanks to this virus, but I still love the bag. This particular bag is weatherproof, so if it's snowing, raining, whatever it may be, I don't have to worry about any of my electronics inside getting wet or damaged in any way. I've seriously never been disappointed in any of their products. They have some of the highest quality standards I've ever seen, and the team over at The Ridge is absolutely fantastic. Go check them out over at ridge.com forward slash Luke and make sure to use promo code Luke at checkout to save 10% off of your entire order. Again, ridge.com forward slash Luke, coupon code Luke at checkout. So the main problem with high employee turnover at a game development studio especially is the extremely high cost of replacement and the fact that the gaming development industry is actually fairly small in the grand scheme of things. A lot of these developers know each other. A lot of them speak to each other and are friends. They share secrets. They know what's going on at any given moment. And especially when somebody's having a really bad experience with one company, especially a big company that's very widely recognizable, such as Naughty Dog, word travels quickly. What this means is that as the non-lead developers over at Naughty Dog have left the studio, the people they're bringing in to replace all of those individuals are inexperienced because the industry veterans who are leaving companies such as Take-Two, maybe Blizzard or uh, EA or Ubisoft, those big companies, they're looking for a job, they see Naughty Dog is hiring and they book it the opposite direction because while they may love Naughty Dog titles, they know that the company culture over there is toxic and it's not worth it. It. And this also has a ripple effect because it makes everything that that company is doing far more expensive, whether it's a video game, film, whatever it may be. And that's because the cost of replacing an employee is incredibly high when compared to the cost of retaining an employee through a raise or something else. And the studies they've done in this are pretty definitive. Most of them show that the average cost of replacing an employee that's salaried, it usually costs around six to nine months of that employee's salary to replace them in full once you factor in all training and recruiting costs. 
And sometimes it can be way worse than this. For instance, with really high experienced and educated employees, such as usually CEOs, CFOs, or individuals who have masters and uh, graduate degrees, those individuals can often experience a replacement cost anywhere from 100 to 200 percent of their annual salary. So if you have an extremely experienced gameplay programmer that was one of the heads of your team that you're paying out 100 grand a year to, that individual could cost as much as $200,000 to replace. So hopefully now you can see why it's so important to keep your employees happy, because if you're not, you're not only going to lose a lot of very high quality talent, but you're also going to find yourself paying out two to three to four times what you would have if you had just kept them happy. Seriously, if you have an employee that's just asking for a 5% raise, mathematically, you should just give it to them because the cost of replacing them is going to be far more expensive than just giving them the raise. I mean, of course, there are other mitigating factors that you have to consider, such as the fact that that indivi individual might not actually deserve the raise or might be taking you around the, around the block with some of this stuff. But all told, usually, you should err on the side of just taking care of your employee because it's not worth losing them and dishing out those additional costs. And from what I've heard through the grapevine, this is a problem that Naughty Dog is well aware of. They know that a lot of their talented developers that were there during Uncharted 4 have left, and apparently a large number of the developers working on The Last of Us Part 2 are planning on leaving the studio after they've finished and shipped the game, and once the reviews have come in and they've got the initial sales numbers so they can take their bonus and get out. And to be perfectly honest, I don't blame them. If the company's treating you really poorly, they're not compensating you accurately or proportionately for the stress they're inflicting on you. I don't see why you should stay. Even if the developer is beloved and even if they have a great reputation in terms of the product they put out, it, it doesn't do a lot. And that's one of the shocking things about this. Apparently a large number of employees over at Naughty Dog are secretly hoping that this game flops that The Last of Us Part Two is considered a commercial failure, that it doesn't sell very many copies, or that it's seen as glitchy or a huge step down in terms of quality, because then, at the very least, you likely will see the management over at Naughty Dog recognize that there's an issue and they have to address their employees directly. The danger, of course, is that if this goes really well and if the game is the redefining of a generation and it's one of the greatest narrative stories ever told then you could see a situation where a lot of the developers are just gonna leave and management's gonna just say well it's working you know what's the point in changing if it's creating some of the best games ever made so get over it i guess and to some extent i can see where they're coming from i understand that perspective i understand why they would say that but i don't think that makes it right but I don't know, let me know what you think of all of this down in the comment section below. I'm actually really interested to hear what just a normal gamer thinks of this situation. Does it bug you that they treat their employees pretty poorly? Is that something that's going to preclude you from purchasing The Last of Us Part Two, Or is it something where you don't really care as long as the product is fine? You know, it's a voluntary transaction after all for an employee to work for a company. So if they don't like it, they should just leave. Or in this case, wait till after the game ships, you get your bonus and then you leave. I wanna hear what you think. Leave your comments. But that's all from me. Thank you for watching, honestly and truly. I love you all more than you could possibly know. Make sure to like and subscribe for future content like this and those critiques I mentioned at the beginning. I love you all. I'll see you in the next video.